everyone. I am Kiran Dadwani, your orientation leader for today's session. Residential life first year focus. Before we get started, I'll be covering some housekeeping items for today's webinar. First, you should be able to hear me clearly. If you cannot, please note that in the chat box or the Q&A box so that we may, we, we may troubleshoot with you. Simple fixes include connecting your audio on the Zoom window, turning up your computer volume, or using external headphones. Second, please utilize the Q&A function if you have any questions for the presenters or about what was shared. For most sessions, all questions will be saved for the end of the presentation. Additionally, participants in the chat are asked to be respectful of others and stay focused on the topic of this webinar so those with questions can easily be seen. Finally, after the session, we will be uploading the recording of this webinar to the Visit Days platform in the video section. All recordings will have closed captioning. Now, I would like to welcome and introduce today's presenter, Kenny Lopez. With that, I'll turn the presentation over to Lopez. Sorry, I'm pretending to be brand new at this. Uh, oh, good morning, everyone. My name is Kenny Lopez. I uh, serve as an assistant director in student housing. So I will be here with you all this morning to help answer some questions about uh, your students moving on to campus with us here in about a month. Um, so um, we'll go ahead and get started. We have a very short presentation and then the majority of the hour that we all have together is uh, for you all to ask questions that you all may have. All right, so what we will be discussing today, um, I will spend a little bit of time going over movement information so that you all have clear um, understanding of that. Um, some changes to our community standards, which are our uh, policies that we have um, on campus. Frequently asked questions, so we'll go over uh, three or four of those for you all. Then an opportunity for families, friends uh, to ask questions um, that you all may have. All right, we're going to ahead and jump right on in. So move in is scheduled for the following days. <clears throat> so Freer Hall and Holly Aloha Towers will move in from Monday, August 16th through Thursday, August 19th. Holly Kahawai and Johnson Hall, Monday and Tuesday. Holly La Lima and Gateway will be Wednesday and Thursday. And then Holly Wainani will be on Saturday and Sunday, August 21st and 22nd, respectively. Please note, I understand that folks um, uh, are like, why can't I move in on these days or that, those days? Uh, the reason being is primarily for physical distancing purposes uh, so that we have enough space and enough time for you to be able to um, come in um, and only have that designated time be your time to move your student into your residence hall. Uh, so it's really important that when folks sign up for the move-in time that you can make that entire block of time. That entire hour and a half block is your time um, to move your student into the residence hall. Um, as I mentioned, all students will be expected to uh, make a sign-up appointment um, for the move-in time. It is very important that they do that in order for us, again, to keep uh, physical distancing in mind and make sure that everyone has the attention needed um, for them when they move into the residence hall. <clears throat> uh, slots are um, available on a first come first serve. So please, in order to minimize crowding, things like that, we ask that you please uh, have your students sign up for an appointment as soon as they can um, to make sure that they have their slot. Sign up links um, have or will continue to be sent to the student's UHM email address. So I'll explain that just a little bit for folks. So once a student has um, been contracted, so you have submitted your $400 deposit, you have said, yes, I am good, I am coming to campus. Um, once that payment deadline has uh, transpired or expired, we will then uh, send you that link. Um, it is um, Sign Up Genius is a system that we're using for the student to physically sign up for the move-in appointment. Um, so that's one of the uh, pieces there that we will help um, <clears throat> help expedite that process for us. Um, some community standard changes and updates. 
so again, face coverings will be required at all times when inside of any residence hall. So I know that um, parents, please help us enforce this with your students as well as for all of you when you are here on move-in day. Um, it is important that that also includes, and important to note, uh, lanai's, balconies, interior courtyards, walkways. So once you have swiped your key to enter any residence hall, your mask must be on at all times until you are in your room with the door closed. <clears throat> Housing residents are free to visit each other. So if I am in one building, Sabrina is in another, for example, um, we are able to visit each other. However, non-housing individuals cannot and are not permitted to go into um, any residence hall. The only exception is on a uh, move-in day. And I'll explain that here further um, if folks have questions about that. Some of the most frequently asked questions that we get. Um, room numbers, when can I find out my room number? Um, room numbers will not be given in advance, unfortunately. You will find that out when you arrive on campus on your official move-in day. When can I begin shipping items to Hawaii? We kindly ask that you not ship any items to Hawaii prior to five days um, before your designated move-in day. Reason being, we just don't have the capacity to uh, store large quantity of items um, on campus. So for that reason, we ask that folks, please try to um, schedule it out or plan it out so that you get those items um, just in time for your arrival on campus. When will I find out my roommate's information? This is a big question already in the Q&A feature. Um, approximately uh, one to two weeks prior to your move-in, uh, there will be a link on our housing website, which I'll put in the chat here in a few, a few seconds, uh, where uh, the student will um, log in, uh, put in their credentials, and the roommate information will populate. Again, there is important to note that that will only populate if both individuals or the other person um, authorized for their information to be shared. That was done through the application process. There was a button that you needed to click. I released my information to my roommate. Um, if you click that, once you put in your credentials, you will get that information. Uh, next big question is about our COVID-19 vaccination requirement. So as uh, has been noted, I will share that information out again. All students who are gonna be residing on campus in our residence halls are required to be fully vaccinated before they can move in. Uh, so residents need to be fully vaccinated before they can move in. Uh, you are considered, quote, fully vaccinated on the 15th day after your second dose series, so Pfizer or Moderna, or 15 days after your single dose, Johnson & Johnson in this case. So example, your final dose was received on August 2nd, you're fully vaccinated on the 16th. So it's a 15 day window that you must have completed that 15 day window before you're able to move into the residence hall. If your student does have um, either a medical or religious exemption that needs to go through our health services office and that needs to be arranged prior to the arrival on campus. So once you come to campus and you expect to move in and then do all of these forms, that will not suffice. It needs to get done prior to your arrival. All right, so here is our um, important page, I guess, for folks to uh, screenshot, things like that. Um, this is our contact information, so our website that does have quite a bit of information available for folks, um, manoa.hawaii.edu backslash housing. Um, you can email uhmsh at hawaii.edu or reslife at hawaii.edu uh, to get any questions that you all may have answered. And then our phone numbers are there. I'm actually going to stop sharing and go through our website very quickly for folks, uh, because that seems to be another place where uh, folks can get a lot of um, really significant questions answered. Um, so let me go to that very quickly for folks. So here is our housing website. I believe you all can see that. Um, so if you click under communities tab, you'll be able to see all of our residence halls here. Most of you will probably be living in Holly Aloha, so you can click on learn more. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see the physical mailing address of each one of the residence halls where your student may be residing with us. 
it is important to note, um, please, please, please make sure that if you're mailing items that they do have the student's official first and last name. Um, you may have a nickname, grandma may have a nickname for the student. Um, my example is uh, for Sabrina, we may call her Brina Boo Boo, but Brina Boo Boo does not live on campus. Sabrina Falejo Ganiza does. Um, so please make sure that you put their student's official first name, um, last name, the mailing address, and that is sufficient until you officially know their room number. All right. The next thing um, I think is important to note under campus life, the move in and move out tab. We have a list of suggested items for folks to bring with them to campus. Um, please note our beds are twin extra long, so please get those um, twin extra long sheets so that they fit on your mattress. Um, some of the um, descriptions or parameters for your microwave or your mini fridge, um, some other things to consider to bring to campus. Also equally as important are items that are prohibited. So please take a look at these so you can make sure that you are not bringing something that you will unfortunately have to turn back around and take back with you. Right. Uh, the last thing I want to share very quickly before we get to answering questions is, um, back out of this. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, we have a parent and family newsletter that was sent out um, about 10 days ago-ish. Um, so this parent and family newsletter can be downloaded and clicked to view where we answer some of the basic questions that a lot of folks have um, regarding um, who is on each floor to help my student with a transition to college. What is uh, all of these acronyms, alphabet soup that we use in housing? Uh, what is the mailing address? What is A, B, C, and D? So we answer a whole slew of different questions on these newsletters for you all to review and hopefully answer some of the questions that you all may have. Um, additionally, please note that we will have a second newsletter that will send out approximately, uh, our goal is August 1st or 2nd, um, that has a little bit more information regarding specifically moving on to campus. So that in sum is our presentation and then we will open it up to answer any questions that folks may have. Thank you, Lopez, and I'll be seeing the questions. So the first quite a few questions is about roommates. And although we did answer that the students will be informed of their roommates a week before move-in, there was another question about, so one of the students asked, if I didn't request a roommate on the application form, but emailed the housing services later requesting a specific roommate, does that mean that we can room together still? Sure. So it is not a guarantee, unfortunately. It is something that we would try our hardest to accommodate. But given the fact that we are working with about 3,200 students and trying to make all the accommodations, it may be a little bit difficult. Um, so please note that we are going to try our best. And another housing question was, is there any way we can edit our housing application? Um, and, and I think that's a little bit more a complicated question. Are you looking to change residence halls? Are you looking to change roommates, things like that? So um, again, I would email our UHMSH um, email address. Please note that um, probably no, to be 100% honest, given the fact that most of our students have already been contracted. Um, so that will be a little bit difficult. However, you can certainly try. Um, but please expect the answer probably is going to be no. Okay. And the next question for housing is, what about those who applied late for housing? Sure. Um, if you apply late, you, you're still able to um, submit applications. Those are still going. They will be an ongoing basis. So we are rolling through um, pretty much all contracts or all applications that we had. So we will continue to work through those. Um, we are doing our next two batches of assignments today. Uh, so if a student does not uh, contract with us, we will have open spaces for the next two batches. So we will continually roll through those up until every space that we have available is filled. The next, sorry, there's so many housing questions. Uh, the next question 
if you just went with random selection for your roommate, when do you find out who your roommate is? Sure. Uh, again, you will be able to find that information on the housing website. Uh, approximately one to two weeks prior to you moving on to campus. So the student will have to go onto the housing website. Uh, there'll be a box that says, find out my roommate information. You will click there, you will put in your credentials. And again, if they released that information or authorize that information to be released, you will be able to find that information there. The next question is mostly about move-in. So after we do check-in and our move-in time is done, what do we do then? We have to leave the building? No, so you do not need to leave the building. So um, I'll kind of explain the entire move-in process so that folks kind of have a general idea of what the process will look like. Once you arrive on campus, there will be very clearly designated demarcated um, spots where you will go. So you will not, not go directly to your residence hall. You will go to a drive-through check-in process that we have in place. You at no point will get out of your car until you're at your building. Um, the first station that you'll go to is probably going to be a nursing station where we will ask to um, see all of your information, i.e. this is your Safe Travels Hawaii website. Um, so each person will need to show us that they are cleared by the state to be on island and be out of quarantine. So that's really important. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit further because that's a little bit complicated. So one, um, at base, any person coming to the island will have to do a 10 day quarantine, if nothing else, okay? The next step above that is if we have taken, it, taken a negative PCR test 72 hours prior to your arrival on island um, and have submitted that to the Safe Travels Hawaii website prior to your arrival on, in Hawaii, you will be able to skip the quarantine and be authorized, uh, get that exemption and be able to um, explore the, the island, if you will. The other option is if you upload your uh, vaccination card, and that vaccination card needs to have been, uh, your vaccinations have to be uh, administered in the United States. Um, if you upload that, you will be able to, again, skip the negative PCR test and the quarantine and are free to go. So we will need to see that in order for you to be able to move into the residence hall. Again, that's the first station. Second station we'll go to is where you will uh, fill out your housing um, forms, all of that jazz. You'll get your room key. Then you'll be directed directly towards your building. You will um, unload your car. We will have hopefully volunteers there that can help you unload, put things into laundry bins and take them up to your room. Once uh, this car has been unloaded, uh, someone will be asked to move the car to the parking structure. You will have a day parking pass. Um, both get, uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Each student moving in will be allowed two guests. So the guests will also need to show their uh, Safe Travels Hawaii website that they are authorized to be here. The guests will get wristbands. The wristbands are good for that entire day. That entire day, so after you have moved the car back to the structure, you're able to come back into the residence hall, and that will be your day to help your student move into the on campus. Um, so after you have unloaded, you can set up, get ready, do all of that stuff. If you need to run to the grocery store to buy a few items that you may have missed, you are certainly able to do so. Um, so again, you will only be allowed in the building on your student's official moving day and not after that. Thank you very much for the thorough answer. The next question is, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is for the students' own supplies. So the question is, can I ship things to campus and when and how do I do that? Absolutely. So again, as I mentioned on in the presentation, five days prior to your arrival on campus is when we ask that you uh, start sending things over uh, to campus. And if you look at the housing website and or the newsletter, you'll be able to find out how to get your mailing address so that you can ship items over. Okay, thank you. The next question is, do, you, do we still need to use the link if you were approved and given a time for late sign up by the Student Housing Center? Sure. Um, so if you have been working with me through Res Life, 
uh, then you do not have to. So I am the one who responds to all of those emails and chats with all of you. So if we, we have been corresponding about a late check-in, you are not required to sign up any separate in any other capacity. Uh, the next question is about laundry and they are asking how they do laundry. Absolutely. So every one of our facilities has a laundry room on there. So we have um, five to 10, depending on your community, washers and dryers. Um, you will have, you can download either an app on your phone um, that you can add money uh, through a debit card, through anything like that electronically. And we also have card stations that you can actually buy a card and put money on there uh, via cash or a, a debit card as well um, to do laundry in our facility. So they're roughly touchless. Um, the app is really good because it also does show you how many washers and dryers are available, um, gives you a little timer of when things are done so you can go grab them out of the washroom. Thank you. Sorry, someone had a question and they asked, what is the app called? Sure, WASH, W-A-S-H hyphen connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T. Okay, and the next question is about the vaccination. And they're asking, where do I upload my vaccination card if I've already been vaccinated? Absolutely. Great question. So your vaccination card needs to be uploaded to the health services uh, portal. So you can type in UHM health services and you will see it at the top of the screen. It says uh, patient portal. Um, then you scroll down and you'll be able to find it there. Uh, where you can upload your vaccination card. So it is important that, that does get done prior to your arrival on campus. Thank you. The next question is, on our move-in day, where do we pick up the sheets we may have ordered? Sure. Uh, so I'll explain the program and then I'll answer that question as well. So um, most individuals have received a mail out from our office. It's called OCM, On Campus Marketing, that does offer um, extensive items to purchase, um, including linens, also care packages that are sent periodically throughout the year for the students, things like that. Um, so once you move on to campus in your welcome packet, you will see a um, quarter sheet that says you have linens to pick up, and that will tell you the information on where to pick those up. Uh, so that information will be on there. I don't want to tell you the place in case we change it, but um, that's where you'll be able to pick up your linens and all the other items that you ordered. Thank you. There's one more question. I'm sorry if you already answered this, but it's the, they're asking where's the website link for the roommate information? Sure, that is the housing website. So uhmsh at hawaii.edu. And that is not available right now, as I mentioned, that will be available one to two weeks prior to move-in. The next question is about the room itself, and it's asking if the beds can be lofted, not by things that we bring, but themselves. Um, so beds are unfortunately not able to be lofted. You can't, they are adjustable. So you can adjust the beds to a variety of different heights um, so that you have less or more storage underneath, however you feel it, um, whatever makes sense for the student. We ask that you all please not do that yourself. We have a service request system that the student can log on and ask for that to be done for them in order to make sure that nothing is broken, no one is injured, and that it is done properly for the safety and security of the students, of course. Next question is about visitors. Mm -hmm. So although dorm rooms will be closed, will visiting students be requested by UH Manoa to wear masks while inside other students' dorm rooms? Sure. Um, so we encourage students to wear face masks at any point in time that they feel comfortable doing so. Um, if you are, um, so we do also have uh, capacity for specific rooms. So if there are more than two people in a room, um, in this case, we strongly encourage them to wear a face covering. 
and we will go over those specific protocols um, once students do get to campus. Um, those are some of the nuances that we're still trying to work out uh, because uh, the guidance are shifting regularly on terms of what is physical distancing, what can we do and what can we not do. Um, so that does shift. Uh, so we strongly encourage students to wear face masks often. Thank you. The next question is, are we supposed to address packages to the actual dorm address or to the hall desk dorm address? Those are two in the same. So I'm confused a little bit of what that question is asking. But um, the if your student is assigned to Lokilani, you can put in Lokilani's address and that is perfectly fine. Um, if you send it to 2555, which is our main housing office, your student will get the package equally the same. So um, really, as long as the name is there, that's what we use more than anything um, to make sure that the package gets to them. I'm wondering if they mean their room number for their actual dorm address. But sure. I'm not so, sure. yep. so the room number, as I mentioned, the room number you will not get until you physically get on, on island on your moving day. Um, so, <clears throat> So after you have that information, you're able to use it, but prior you won't have that available. The next question is about check-in. If we Uber to campus on check-in day, where should we be dropped off? Is check-in far from the dorms themselves or can the Uber driver take us all the way to our dorms after checking in? Um, they certainly can take you all the way to your residence hall after you check in. However, uh, we, um, we don't want you to continuously be charged for waiting in line if there is lines, things like that. So what we ask is that you're dropped off at the check-in location, um, and then we will uh, try our best to get a, a shuttle, a golf cart, something like that to take you to your residence hall. The next question is, I submitted my housing contract almost a month ago and haven't been sent my move-in link. So I would encourage the student to look at their spam because unfortunately, sometimes the link does go to spam. If for some reason um, they don't see it, I will put in um, my email address on here or the email address that you should email, reslife at hawaii.edu. Um, so giving me your, your first and last name and your ID number and I can certainly check and have that resent to you. Okay. Thank you. And the, the next question is, do all the towers get to have roommates? Yes. All students who live in Hale Aloha Towers will have roommates. The next question is, what type of self-defense tools is my daughter allowed to have in her dorm? Um, if we're asking in terms of her personal safety, i.e. pepper spray, tasers, things like that, um, none. Um, if we're talking if martial arts, things like that, still none, uh, we ask them to please find a spot off campus that they can um, store those items um, off site. Those are unfortunately not allowed in our residence halls. If you're asking more, how can they defend themselves in terms of that? So we do have um, a variety of different self-defense programs and opportunities for students to get trained in that. Um, through our Department of Public Safety on campus. Okay, thank you. The next question is, will there be other people that can help us move in on move-in day? So again, as I mentioned, you will have two guests or helpers that will be allowed to um, assist you during move-in day. So those are the two folks that you're able to do that. Um, after that, unfortunately, we are not able to allow anybody else in. So if, um, so the student can choose who are the two people that they want. Okay, thank you. Next question is, I think it might be more of a concern. Sure. So the concern is my daughter committed to University of Hawaii and we paid very quickly. She was placed in La Lima. She was disappointed to know that she is not in the freshman towers. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, given space capacity, we can't put 
all of our incoming class in Hale Aloha. But I will tell you that La Lima is all freshmen, so she's still going to get a traditional freshman experience. So it really is not any different from anywhere else. Thank you. The next question is about roommates. If we have requested a roommate that has been contracted to a different building, is it possible to still have that roommate or will the request be denied? Um, if the student, if both students have already been contracted, at this point, there's nothing else that can be done. We're trying to roll through our um, a list of applications as fast as we can. So we strongly encourage um, just to wait till about two weeks after move-in, but we have an open transfer period where um, if there are spaces available, we can try to move students around at that point. Thank you. The next question is, if we would like to room with someone assigned to a different building, is there a chance one of us could switch into the other building? But it's the reverse of the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but as I just mentioned, we would have to wait until the open transfer period. At this point, um, there is unfortunately nothing we can do because we're just trying to get through as many of uh, the folks who have submitted applications as possible. Thank you. The next question is, will you let us know early if we cannot house? We will let you know as soon as we know. Um, so we will continually roll through, uh, continue uh, the process of uh, contracting as many students in a rolling basis as we can through move-in. So depending on when you applied um, is when you'll find out your information, unfortunately. So just be patient. Thank you. The next question is, I am going to live in Freer Hall are we for sure having roommates for four room for occupancy? Sure. So a, a four by four in Freer, as we call it internally, is um, each individual student has their own room um, and you're in a suite with those three other individuals. So that is, uh, so in that case, do you have roommates? Do you have immediate person in your room? No, but you have those three other suite mates. Um, so I hope that answers that question. So you will not have someone in your immediate bed space, but you will be sharing with the other folks. Thank you. Sure. The next uh, question. And the question of what halls will have roommates. Um, so again, uh, pretty much all the halls. So La Lima, all of our Hali Aloha. So uh, Ilima, Lehua, Mokihana, Lokilani, Johnson, Gateway, um, and for your hall, depending on your room type, will determine whether or not you have roommates. Thank you. The next question is about Gateway and their move-in. So my move-in date is 18 since I'm staying in Gateway. I have to leave the 16 due to military obligations and won't be back until the end of August. Is there a way I can move in of the morning of the 16th? Unfortunately, there isn't. So um, we have very specific move-in days when our maintenance team releases the buildings back over to us. Um, so I would encourage folks, if you have specific questions like that, certainly email reslife at hawaii.edu um, and we would try to accommodate as best as possible. But please note that our maintenance team has very clear deadlines on when they release the buildings over to us. So as much as we would like to accommodate everyone, um, it's not, unfortunately, not possible. <clears throat> Thank you. Next question is, is there anywhere on the housing website, newsletter, moving in, Manoa booklet, etc., that gives closet and storage space sizes, dimensions, our student will have two pieces of luggage, carry-on, etc.? Um, there is unfortunately no place that you can really find that information. But again, uh, if you do want to store things like that as suitcases easily under the bed um, on top of the dresser. So if you go onto our website, you can actually click. Um, it's a 360 view of the room. So you can see the space that you would have on top of the armoire, uh, different places to store some of those items. So that is absolutely manageable 
um, with the space in the rooms. Thank you. Next question is, if travel arrangements have already been made and it's after the move-in date, will there be a problem with moving in? It is certainly not ideal, but again, as I mentioned, um, shoot us an email at reslife.hawaii.edu. Uh, sorry, reslife at hawaii.edu. Yep. And then we can certainly work with you all to figure out what are some of the options that we can afford you um, to have a seamless move-in. But please note that we are, because of physical distancing, because of staffing, things like that, uh, the move-in dates have been pre-assigned and arranged. Um, every year, unfortunately, also um, Friday, August 20th is a state holiday. So it is right in the middle of all of it. So that's why that, that specific date is not available for students to move in. Thank you. Next question is, how can I coordinate with my roommate who is bringing a mini fridge and microwave if my roommate does not share their information? Sure. Um, unfortunately, what I strongly encourage to do is wait till you arrive on campus and order before you buy any of those larger items for a variety of reasons. One, um, we can't unfortunately make every student release their information. One. Um, two, um, I would certainly say take advantage of the sales tax in Hawaii being much cheaper than a lot of other places. Um, Walmart, Target, Costco, Sam's Club, all of those folks know that we have movement and one movement is, so or even longs for that matter. So they will um, stock up quite significantly on those larger scale items, mini fridges, microwaves, things like that, so that you can easily, or fans even, that you can easily get those um, when you get to Island. Thank you. The next question is, will the parents be allowed into the dorm on days other than move-in day? No, unfortunately the answer is no. So all of our guest uh, policies, if you will, will um, only apply or exemptions will only apply for your students moving day. So after that, we will unfortunately not allow any parents to come into any residence halls. Okay, thank you. Next question is, do we do we arrive to our time slot for moving early or at the exact time? Early is good. Um, if you arrive a little bit early, we will just have you wait a second until we are ready for you to go and then we will um, cue you accordingly. So if you can make it earlier, that's even better for us. Thank you. The next question is for the honors program students. The question Will honors program participants only room with other honors students, or will we be randomly placed with any UH Manoa student? What floor in Lokalani is for honors? Sure. Um, so we will, first priority for the honors program is given to honors or regent scholars. After that, if there are spaces available, um, we will certainly back go with um, just random UH students. So that is certainly important to know. Um, what floors is Honors House in 910? Thank you. Next sure. question is, I think it's mostly about the vaccine. Sure. Should students bring a copy of their shot records, even though we've already submitted all this info? Um, no, you would have to, uh, you do not have to show it to us in person. You will have to upload it to the link that Sabrina has put in the chat for all of you. So that is uh, the direct link to the health services office, our website. Uh, you would have to put it all in there. So you do not have to show it to us when you move in, but we will know that you are cleared to move in. Thank you. Okay, the next question is, at the end of the school year during move out, where can we store our things for the summer? Sure. What students will typically do, and I will actually refer this over to you even, um, what did you do? Well, I had a family friend in Hawaii, so I just gave all my stuff to him. But I know some students, they actually just sell their things, and then the year they come back, they buy it again. Or there's also a storage place in Hawaii. I forgot the name, but there's two, I think. You have to do some research, but it's called Hawaii Storage, and you can probably store your stuff there for 
a month or two. And I don't know much about the cost, but it's possible to store items. So that is very common with us. So we do have um, quite a few different storage companies um, throughout the island or close to campus that will, um, in some cases, even come to your residence hall to pick up your items because most students won't have cars um, where they can uh, take stuff and store them. So we encourage folks to partner up and pair up with folks that they may be living with the following year to do that. Thank you. The next question is, it's about move-in. Is early move-in allowed for out-of-state residents? No, unfortunately, no early move-in is allowed, as we mentioned, um, because our maintenance team releases our buildings to us um, pretty much up to the minute when uh, we start moving. So unfortunately, move-in is not allowed, or early move-in is not allowed for any students. Thank you. Next question is, oh, it's about Uber. I, you may have already answered it, but it's so, uh, if they don't have a car and they're asking if they're Ubering to the school, will that still work? Absolutely, that will still work. You will still follow the same process. Um, once you get to the check-in station, we will unload you from your Uber so you're not continuously paying for that. Um, and we will help you with the process. Thank you. Next question is, should we have already been, should we have already received an email to set up our appointment to move in? It depends on when you were contracted, when you paid your deposit. Um, so in this case, again, I would encourage you to email me at uh, reslife, R-E-S-L-I-F-E -E, at hawaii.edu. Um, and I can look to see if you've been contracted um, or what round you were assigned in. And I can um, resend the link to you if you for some reason have lost it or don't have it. But I would encourage you to check your um, spam folder as well, because it does come from signupgenius.com. Thank you. Next question is, do we have to get the negative test information for each island? For example, if we go to Maui and provide negative test info the prior week, do we need to do this again on Oahu? No, so there is no testing requirement to go between islands. So this is just from the continent to uh, the Hawaiian islands is when it is required. So either the proof of full vaccination in the United States or a negative PCR test um, 72 hours prior to your arrival. And I would encourage you to look at uh, uh, hawaiicovid19.com because that's where you will find the most accurate information on um, any COVID procedures that may change uh, because things are still changing uh, quickly with us. Thank you. The next question is, is there any way we could get a total of three guests for moving? Unfortunately, there is not because we have a certain number of individuals who are allowed in the building at one time. So unfortunately, it's just gonna be two. So it's two plus the student. So that's a total of three. Thank you. The next question is, can parents stay on campus longer than the time slot we signed up for on our move-in day? Yes, they can. Uh, so you will unfortunately have to be out by the end of that day. Um, so we're not walking around saying like, oh, it's midnight, you have to go, but you will not be allowed back in the following day. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question is for safe travels. With the safe travels info, what if I have been here for a month already and the two guests live on island? Sure. Um, so what you will do is you will just have to show proof of that in some capacity, whether that be um, a variety of different things. So we will ask for you to show proof of that. Um, typically, uh, one of the main ones that people would do is um, if you have a smartphone and you take a picture, um, it typically geotags where you've been at or um, even a bank statement that says that you've been here for 14 days with you've eaten at Zippy's as an example in the last 14 days. Um, so something like that would be sufficient for us to show that you've been on island for longer than 14 days. Or if you're from Hawaii, just state ID, that works too. Thank you. The next question is, what happens if you already send things or order things to be delivered over to UH Manoa? 
Um, hopefully we have space to hold them. If not, those will be returned to sender, unfortunately, because we have been very clear on that we have to wait five days before sending those items over. Next question is, with us having roommates now and everyone being vaccinated, will we be able to have people in our room, different halls and also people who do not go to UH? Uh, so the first part of that question, uh, different halls, absolutely. So that is allowed. Um, diff people who do not go to UH, no. So you must be a uh, UH housing resident, UHM housing resident, in order to be allowed in the residence hall. Thank you. The next question is, can you explain OCM.com? Absolutely. OCM is, stands for on-campus marketing. That is um, a very big organization that does specifically a lot of items for college campuses. Um, specifically how we partner with them is um, buying linens. So linens are, um, it comes with not just linens is what I was trying to explain. Um, pillows, decorative items, things like that, that you can pre-order from OCM and will be on campus for your arrival when you get to campus. Um, something else that they offer are uh, care packages. So parents can offer to opt into those, pay for those, and uh, write personalized notes to the student and the package will be sent out every um, major event, holiday, things like that that come up. So um, midterm time, the student will get a care package. Halloween, Thanksgiving, uh, winter break, spring break, things like that. Um, so that is a really cool way that um, we partner with that company as do a lot of college campuses. Thank you. The next question is, is it better to be in the freshman towers? What will my student be missing if she isn't in the freshman towers? There is really no difference on which community you're in. Um, given that we have such a large freshman class, the community that the students set up is the community that they make of themselves, right? They make themselves. As I mentioned, there will be a lot of first year students or freshman students also in Kahawai, for example, or even Johnson for that matter. So um, it, there really is no difference um, on where you live or will you be missing out on something specifically? Absolutely not, not just not um, solely on what community you live in. Thank you. The next question is, do parents also upload their COVID vaccination card onto the UH Health Portal if they're helping our child move in? No, so parents do not have to upload their vaccination card um, to the UH Health Portal. You will only have to upload your vaccination card to Safe Travels Hawaii. Thank you. The next question is, I handed in the reactivation form for housing and still haven't gotten a dorm yet. When will I find this out? And what do I do if I don't get a dorm? Sure. Um, so the reactivation, unfortunately, makes means that you will go to the bottom of the list uh, because you missed your contracting period. Um, so when will you find out? We, again, are working through those as soon as we get them. So we're trying to get as many of them done as possible. Um, what happens if you don't get a residence hall? Unfortunately, we will try to get that information to you as soon as we can, but I would encourage folks as we get a little closer into August um, to potentially look for um, additional places so you can, excuse me, stay off campus, unfortunately. Thank you. Next question is, this may be about Hale Aloha dorms, sure. but it's asking, this person is asking, because of COVID, how many roommates will I have? Sure. Um, it depends on where you live. Again, um, as I mentioned, if you live in a traditional um, Hale Aloha room, you will have one additional roommate. If you're living in the apartments, for example, if you're an upper class student, you will have, um, we do have doubles, which will be two individuals, or we have quads, which will be four individuals. So it just depends on which community you're living in. Thank you. The next question is, can we come and go all day on move-in day, moving more things in, if we need to run and buy something else and come back? Sure. 
Um, so I think that one's a little bit complicated. So what we ask is, um, you will certainly not be able to drive directly up into the building because your moving time has passed. So we will probably um, have to carry items quite a distance. Um, so please be patient with that. And we may also ask for you to um, hold on a second or wait until the elevator is free before you can use the elevator to go into one of the residence halls. Um, primarily being that we have uh, designated times for each individual group of folks to move in. Um, so we want to make sure that they have the priority and the liberty to move in comfortably in and out um, of those items. So we ask that you please be patient with us and know that you may have to um, walk a distance with items. This question is, is the deposit for housing due today, July 22nd, or the full payment? Uh, it is the deposit. So it depends on what when you were contracted. The full payment is due by August 19th, so it is not due yet. Okay, thank you. The next question is, um, is it common for freshmen to not be put in the freshman dorms? Yes, it is common. Um, and again, um, that is not something to be concerned about. They will still get a traditional first year experience. Thank you. The next question is, if we are fully vaccinated, will we not have to get a COVID test 72 hours prior to arrival in Hawaii? That is correct. If you have been fully vaccinated in the United States, you can upload your vaccination card to the Save Travels Hawaii website and that will give you an exemption so that you do not have to do a PCR test prior to arriving in Hawaii. Thank you. The next question is, does everyone have access to the gym re recreation facilities or is it just the committed athletes? And to use these facilities, is there a sign up sheet or slots because of COVID? Sure, the first part of that question is athletes have their designated um, weight rooms and gym areas. So we do have the uh, Warrior Rec Center that is right next to Campus Center for uh, general population students. So um, faculty staff can also use that. There are, um, I believe community members have been restricted from using it because of COVID. Um, is there signups? I believe there is not. You just, it's a first come first serve. When they have met capacity, then uh, they will have folks wait outside until space does become available. The next question is, can you provide an estimate of how many rooms are still available? How do the housing application count compared to prior normal years when there were roommates? Unfortunately, I can't. I don't have those numbers in front of me, nor do I want to make those up. Um, I do know that this is the largest incoming freshman class that has ever been admitted to Manoa. Um, that's from the admissions folks. So I do know that we do have a lot of first year students. Thank you. The next question is, if my roommate's information is not allowed to be released to me before they move in, will I at least find out if I'm assigned a roommate and possibly what day will they move in so that I know when to plan to buy a fridge or microwave or other shared item? Sure. Unfortunately, we cannot share any of that information. So I, this is, a, I guess, a good time for me to explain FERPA. Uh, so uh, there is a federal law that is in place that allows or doesn't allow us to share any personal information with anybody else. Um, and this is where this comes into play, right? So um, unfortunately, um, in your case, Lauren, we will ask you to come to campus and wait to see when you, um, to see if they, um, you will, more likely than not have a roommate, and then um, who would be buying the items that you will be sharing, things like that. Thank you. The next question is for four room four occupancy, are the units pre-assigned or first come? They are pre-assigned as are um, in any uh, residence hall, you are assigned a side. So you will be told you are going into a room 1054A or 1054B. Um, it's important to remember that because when you go into the room, 
A will be on the left, B will be on the right. Uh, that's a side that you're assigned on. So if for some reason you two decide to switch and there is damages to the other side of the room, you are going to be responsible for whatever side you are assigned to. Um, so that is in the same with the four by four and all of that stuff. Your key for a four by four will only work to the, your exact room. But if you are in a larger room, i.e. a double occupancy, please make sure that you go to your assigned side. Sabrina just asked, maybe we could, you could talk about co-ed living. Sure. Uh, Sabrina, do you want to add a little bit more? What are you referring yeah. to? Yeah. So some, um, there's been a few questions about like the, maybe this actually might be our last question. So um, in the restroom, like how are the restrooms set up, um, especially it. in the towers? Like, is it co-ed? Is got it, it? Okay. Um, got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I was like, uh, what do you mean? Okay. Uh, so all of the floors are not gender specific. So um, the rooms are assigned by gender identity. So um, in this case, here and Sabrina will room together. I would room with a male. Um, the restrooms are semi-private restrooms. So when you walk into the restroom and you lock the door behind you, everything in there, um, everything is in there that you will need, i.e. a shower, a stall, um, a shower, a toilet, and a sink. So you will have all of that in there. Um, before or after you, maybe someone from the same gender, gender identity, or opposite. So um, it is important to note that it is semi-private. So if you lock the door, that is your space for the time that you're in there. Thank you, Kenny. So I know some folks still have questions coming in and we're so sorry. Uh, we answered over a hundred questions. So um, way to go, Kenny, you need a drink of water. Um, but we do wanna be conscientious of your folks time. If we did not get to your question, we are so sorry. Um, please email reslife at hawaii.edu. Um, or if you want to ask nrwo at hawaii.edu, we'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Um, and I'll pass it over to Kiran to close us out. Thank you for joining us today for this presentation. We hope that you gained some helpful information from Kenny Lopez. If you have further questions that were not discussed, please email your OL or nrwo for at hawaii.edu for assistance. As mentioned, this webinar will be published on the NSO platform, so please visit that page for the recording, as well as links for links or documents mentioned by today's guest. Mahalo.